Hi, it's TK with the Weekly Words of Encouragement. We're starting a new series on women of the Bible. In this series, we will explore the stories of various women in the Bible and discover how their stories can encourage, inspire, and warn us. Now, in previous video devotionals, we discussed Hannah, Ruth and Naomi, Abigail, Esther, and the woman with the issue of blood, among others. And as you might imagine, there are many other women identified in the Bible. While we won't be able to discuss all of them, we will highlight a few women of the Bible over the next few months. Specifically, we will highlight the stories of Eve, Sarah and Hagar, Rebecca, sisters Rachel and Leah, Rahab, Deborah and Jael, the Samaritan woman at the well, sisters Mary and Martha, relatives Mary and Elizabeth, and we will finish the series with Priscilla, Lydia, and Phoebe. Now we won't have time to discuss every detail and nuance about these women, so I encourage you to study their stories on your own. Okay, let's get started. It is definitely most appropriate to start with Eve. She is the mother of all who live. And those of us alive today still have to live with the consequences of Eve's actions and decisions. We first meet Eve in the first book of the Bible, Genesis. Although she is not initially identified by the name Eve, she first appears in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, which tells us, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. This means Eve, like Adam, was made in the image of God. Eve was just as much a bearer of the Imago Dei as Adam. And in Genesis 2, we learn more about her origin story. God saw that Adam, the man, was alone, and God did not think that was good. The animals had mates, but there was no mate for Adam, so God decided to create a helper who was just right for him. Then God put Adam to sleep, took out part of his side, and created Eve. Adam had named the animals, so it was not surprising that he also named this new creation. He said, at last, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. Now, interestingly, we don't actually find out the woman's name until after the fall, when Adam named her Eve, because she was the mother of all who lived. Eve, in Hebrew, sounds like the Hebrew word that means to give life. Now, speaking of the fall, wouldn't it be nice if the story ended with Adam and Eve living in the Garden of Eden in peace and tranquility and in close relationship with God without shame and sin? But alas, Genesis 3 tells us what happened, and it was not good. Eve's actions and decisions introduced sin into the world. Satan, in the form of a serpent, appeared to Eve and questioned what God had told them, starting the conversation with, did God really say? And in the conversation that followed, Satan refuted what God said about eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and bad. God prohibited them from eating the fruit and said they would die. But Satan told Eve that she would not die from eating the, tree, the fruit from the tree. Instead, according to Satan, eating the fruit would make Eve like God. Now in response to her conversation with Satan, the woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. She listened to Satan and disobeyed God. But when God confronted her about her actions, she blamed the serpent rather than taking responsibility for her decision to eat the fruit. And as you know, Eve's decision to listen to Satan and eat the fruit resulted in the fall of humanity. Sin entered the world. 
And although Adam and Eve did not immediately die a physical death, they did experience an immediate spiritual death, separation from God. God cursed them and banished them from the Garden of Eve. Well, as her name suggests, Eve did become the mother of all who live. After the fall, she gave birth to Cain and Abel and Seth, among other children. And you may recall that Cain killed his brother Abel. So almost immediately after disobeying God, we see the consequences of Eve's sinful actions and decisions. There's so much more to this story, and I encourage you to read and study the first few chapters of Genesis. These chapters help explain not only the storyline of the Old Testament, but also the need for a Messiah who appears in the New Testament. Eve's decision to listen to Satan introduce sin into the world, and only through Jesus can we receive forgiveness for our sins and spend eternity with God. So here's what we can learn from Eve's story. One, trust what God said. And two, when God tells you not to do something, don't do it. Now, although we don't hear the audible voice of God like Adam and Eve did, he speaks to us through his word, the Bible. So if the enemy asks you, did God really say? Open up your Bible and respond with God's word. Amen and amen. I pray you have a blessed week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.